Hi, physical science students, Mrs. Johnson here. In this video, we're going to review some of the static electricity concepts that we went over last week. I'm hoping to clear up a couple of misconceptions that I saw in people's work. And then we'll go over the Coulomb's Law FET simulation, which you should have already done for this week. So let's start by looking at the picture that's on my screen. And this is just another FET simulation. If you wanted to look, at, look it up, it's called Balloons and Static Electricity. You can play with it a little yourself. So what we have here is a sweatshirt a balloon, and a wall. And what you can see is the charges reflected in each of them. So notice we've got the positive charges and the negative charges, and they're all matched up one to one. Um, the positive charges in an object come from the protons. The negative charges come from the electrons. And you can see right now that currently um, every positive charge is balanced by a negative charge, and that goes for all three objects. That means that right now all three objects are neutral. They have no overall charge. But we know, especially from what you did last week, what's going to happen if I take this balloon and rub it against the sweater. The balloon's made of plastic, the sweater is some like wool material. Hopefully you can see what's happening as I rub the balloon along the sweater. I'm gonna let the balloon go now. So I'm going to separate them so you can see what happened. As I rubbed the balloon along the sweater, um, negative charges, electrons, transferred from the sweater to the balloon. That means that the balloon now has an overall negative charge. It's a negatively charged object because it's gained more electrons. And what's left on the sweater is a positive charge. It's not that the sweater has gained positive charges, there's just no negative charges left to balance it out, or there are less negative charges. So overall, the sweater's positive. Now when I let the balloon go, you can see those two oppositely charged objects attract. All right, so those are two charged objects. They have opposite charges on them, they're attracting. There's one more concept that I want you to see, and that involves the wall over here. So if you remember a couple of years ago um, in school, it was really popular to like rub the pencil along the wall and then stick the pencil to the wall. Um, that was essentially a static electricity trick that we were seeing. Um, sometimes a balloon will stick to a wall and you don't even have to rub the wall. So what we're seeing here is now that the balloon will stick to the wall if you place it up against the wall. But I didn't do any rubbing. I didn't cause any transfer of particles from the balloon to the wall. Why then is the balloon sticking to the wall? The wall, if I move the balloon away, you can see all of the wall is neutrally charged. Every positive is balanced out by a negative. What's happening when I put the balloon in the vicinity of the wall? This is a phenomenon called polarization. The negatively charged balloon is actually repelling the negative charges in the wall. The wall has some ability to let its electrons move around. So those negative charges get pushed to the side and that leaves in this place around the balloon a positive charge on the wall. So the wall itself is not overall charged. We can see that as I move the balloon away. It's neutral, but when the balloon comes in contact with it, it becomes what's called polarized. The charges are unbalanced in that area. That's why now the negative balloon sticks to the polarized wall. So that concept of polarization is something that's important. Um, it doesn't mean that the wall's overall charged, just at this moment in time, it has an imbalance um, or in equal, unequal distribution of charges. Hopefully that helps explain maybe a little bit what, of what was happening in your demo that you did last week or some of the demonstrations that you saw from last week um, in case you were still a little unsure of what was happening. Let's look now at the FET simulation from this week, which you should have already completed. So. The FET simulation is here on the right side of my screen. We're just going to go through a couple of major points because I want to make sure that you understand them before we move on. And yes, I'm going to give you a couple of the answers in this video. So we have our two charges here. Um, the first question that I want to look at is question number two. It says make both of the particles positively charged. So I'm going to adjust them to make the one on the left positive and the one on the right positive. And then what kind of force do I get? Hopefully you see this is a repulsive force with the arrows pointing away from each other. Um, those two charges are gonna push away from each other. Now imagine that these are like magnets. We've all played with magnets before. If you have two north ends of the magnet and you try to stick them together, what's gonna happen? They push apart. That's because the two north ends do not attract each other. They repel each other, the two like sides. 
Same thing with particles, charged particles. Um, opposite, excuse me, same charges repel each other. So they're going to apply a force on each other, and it's a repulsive force. <clears throat> and then if we increase the value, so we went from zero charge to positive eight in the FET simulation, the force obviously increased. The second thing that I want to discuss is question number three. Now we're going to make one positively charged and one negatively charged. So I'm making the one on the left negative. What kind of force do we have now, attractive or repulsive? Hopefully we see that it's attractive. This is like taking the north and the south end of a magnet. We know if we take the opposite ends of a magnet and put them near each other, they're going to attract. Same thing with oppositely charged particles, like a proton and a neutron. They're going to attract each other. So I have the answer here. We see an attractive force. That's because opposite charges attract each other, not repel. And then does the value of the force increase or decrease? From the previous question, it should be the same because the number, the charge number didn't change. It just went from positive to negative. Um, now it says move the charged particles to make them further apart. Do the forces get, do the force on each particle get larger or smaller? So I'm going to take the left one and move it further away. And hopefully what we see is that the arrows are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. That means that our force is getting um, less and less and less. The force on each one. So now think about our magnets. Say we've got the north end of the magnet, the south end. I have to get them a certain distance to each other before they attract. The further and further I take them away from each other, the less of that attractive pull I feel. Same thing happens with charged particles. Okay, and then the last couple of things that I want to go over um, are the checkpoint questions. Identify two variables you can change in order to change the force the particles experience. So the first thing I can do to these particles in order to change the force is to change the value of the charge. That's what we just saw. I'm going to make the force, the charge one, much bigger. So it's going to go from negative six to negative ten, a bigger magnitude. We can see that the the force increases as I make the charges smaller or closer to zero. The forces get smaller. The other thing that I can do is change the distance. Further apart, less force. Closer together, greater force. Okay? So hopefully that makes sense. You should be able to answer the rest of the checkpoint questions and the summary questions. And then in the next video, we will apply some of this.